Okay, fuck you, fat ever. Uh, old Matt would not have enjoyed these. Old Matt has snacks that are exclusively 100% artificial flavor and There's color. too much natural ingredients in there for me both. I get the concept, but so you can not feel, agreeing with my stomach. <laughs> you can feel good about what you're eating. Nature Box is offering our listeners three free snacks. I feel like Matt would go in on that just Old Just Matt. for the freedom. But I don't know. I would prefer would to that. eat. There's the something you can get at this bodega. It's Swedish fish with even more food coloring. New, new Matt is already yeah. setting up like dummy email accounts and uh, getting fake credit well, cards. Well, I was, I was eating some last time we did this ad, and I'm having a Pavlovian reaction over <laughs> here. <laughs> Although New Matt stealth has a pretty disgusting diet himself, let's be I honest. Bet. But he doesn't, he doesn't flaunt it. No. <laughs> Nature box back. It's much tougher. When there are actual Nazis out there killing people at rallies to pretend that you're just basically kidding. I'm just mostly joking about this. And I suspect also his wife said you're not allowed to go. My wife. So. My wife stopped me from my racism. <laughs> <laughs> now, we can laugh, but we should say there's a little bit of... There's a sad the note. Pathos. Yeah, there's a sad note to um, to uh, Gavin McGinnis's um, situation a little bit, and um, this is from a couple of weeks ago. We've been meaning to get to it. Um, it's really tough for this guy. Understand that he was pushed out of Vice. Um, I mean, he, I think he made s several million dollars. Uh, but all his buddies went on to make several hundred million dollars. And that stings. We've all been there. Um, and, but what really hurts is that a lot of his old friends are apparently not appreciating his funny jokes about um, racism and, and whatnot or... I don't know. I guess his friends have decided to uh, just, are just not interested in him. And, uh, oh, we've sped this up because it's so long that we wanted to, I mean, this guy really, really, this is a, quite the indulgement. But, uh, so we've sped it up for your listening abilities. Wah, my friends don't like me anymore. Thanks a lot, Trump. All my cool, famous friends don't like me anymore. And it's weird, too, uh, being here on the far right, which is just really the, Bill Clinton's politics, but in 2017, that's considered radical. Um, when you haven't seen a friend in a while, you don't know if you're in the doghouse or not. So you sort of walk up going, hi. They go, hey, what's up? But then a good 65% of the time you see them go, oh, hello. And uh, I don't really give a shit. Uh, it's kind of hard to explain to women, but the way we are as men, cis men, and trans ladies who become men, you're gonna have to get used to this. When you uh, lose a friend at this age with a family, you just sort of go, bye. It's like finding out someone's a pedophile. You just They cease to be. And it's because they didn't confront you first and say, what's going on with this thing? So if they X you without talking to you, you go, good riddance. But I thought it would be worth sort of uh, looking at some of the people that, that have oh, done this because so I... What, what Gavin's saying is here is that, um, and he's, he's going to explain, when you're a man of this age and your friends turn out to be not the people you want them to be or they're acting like jerks to you, what you do is clean cut off. You don't, you just, that's it. You just say goodbye. You don't go out and whine about it or spend, I don't know, such a, you know, like actually sit down and make a video and a list of all the people who don't like you anymore with graphics and so long that we actually have to speed it up. You're a man now. And so you don't, oh, wait, I did do that. Oh, okay. Well, we might as well listen. Uh, looking at some of the people that, that, that have done this because I do care. And I care because when you're married, they ex your wife, too. My wife is a vegan uh, person of color who voted for Hillary, and she is now a pariah. Not the fish, the leper. And that breaks my heart because uh, it, it just shows... Oh, positive. So now I understand what it is. He's doing this in defense of his wife, who um, I must... Uh, maybe she's very excited about his politics. Maybe... Maybe that's it. Maybe that's it. It's a uh, she, she's not blaming Gavin at all for it. Irrational and cruel these people are in in Trump's America. I mean, we were not bananas about Obama, by the way. And I hated watching you froth at the mouth when he would walk by. It's sort of like the way people would see Neil deGrasse Tyson. It just looks so unnaturally excited that it was a real turnoff. But we didn't ex you. 
Well, now, wait a second. Uh, Hold on for one second. Is Gavin saying that his, uh, his famous friends are Chris Matthews and Neil deGrasse Tyson? I'm confused now, but let's go. So there's different categories with the friends that dump you. And I thought John Glazer is an interesting one. He's a comedian guy, very successful uh, comedy dude, and uh, he's got his own show again. And we were always buddies. Our families are friends, and we'd go on vacation together. And I remember he sent me this uh, text. And by the way, apolitical. We don't talk about politics. The only political thing John and I ever discussed was Louis C.K. I said I don't like that he glorifies or at least normalizes divorce, and he disagreed. That's it. The other 99% of our discussions were two things. One, we can't believe that we're the only ones who know how to load a dishwasher. It drives me insane. Every time I open the dishwasher and there's cups facing up and nine plates touching each other where there's no way the jets could get in. So I'd send him pictures of that and he'd send me pictures. And then we'd also send pictures of when we do it and it's perfect. Looks like a dishwasher, dishwasher commercial. The other thing we talked about is uh, we both lived in yuppie buildings for a while and the notices that they send inter-building notices like, hey, I'm getting rid of this $400 chair. I'm selling it for 300 bucks if anyone's interested. Like anyone wants your garbage. And then he sends me this text and he goes, yeah, uh, I want to send you this picture of a dishwasher, but I think that time has come, you know, the time. And I go, pardon? And he goes, well, I think we both knew this was coming, but obviously because of Trump. <laughs> I was just like, bye, we had a good ride. <laughs> a semi reach out from uh, David Cross's wife, Amber Tamlin. And during the whole incident on the bus, the vulgar joke on the bus. And she goes, how do you feel living in uh, Trump's America? I think she did an article recently. She goes, raising a daughter in Trump's America makes me more of a resolute feminist or something. And so it's just a joke, and she goes, but you have a daughter, have someone with a daughter, and I, that makes me blow my top when people bring my kids into arguments, and I think that's part of what they're trying to do. They want to make you irrational, so they go, do you think men should wear chastity belts? No, that's insane. What about your daughter? Yes, all men should wear chastity belts. And so I reminded her that she had made vulgar jokes involving my offspring, and uh, she goes, never text me again. Bye. Uh, Steve Duran, the guy I did the Brotherhood of the Traveling Rants with, he, he called me a fascist and says, when you're done with this fascism, you can, we can be friends again. Fuck you forever. That's my common quote I say, it's fuck you forever, we're done. I know some of the people that he's referenced in this, and apparently uh, he also, this is the real problem, I think, has more to do with the self-aggrievement uh, that is involved in this than his politics. It seems like that's indicative of a larger problem. I mean, look, still talking about how he didn't get the hundreds of millions of dollars that his friends did. And look, you know, it's difficult. You've got to get past it, though. You've got to take the couple of millions that you have, and, and go on. Now, I've guys got other issues, too. But I just, uh, I thought that was funny. But You know, Sam, when you are a cis, and I should add a real man, Samantha, something you would not know anything about with your extra estrogen levels and Rachel Maddow resemblance, when we have a falling out, what we do is we say, fuck you forever, and then we take to YouTube. To describe in great detail, you know, and I would I like to you, discuss. I was going to ask you about this. Um, yes, go ahead, right wing Mandela, because I know that you know a lot of people have a perspective of you that you are anything but right wing, and I can imagine that when you really sort of well, really, this was just mainstream light, ANC politics in the seventies. It's just <laughs> that the party has left me. I have not left the party, if that makes sense. It, it does. So I mean, as an example, but you know, but look, first of all, Winnie still thinks Zulus are human. <laughs> she still thinks we should close the border with Zambia. Why do you have to not socialize with her? She's an empowered woman. But you know, this is what it is like. Oliver Tambo, he texts me, he says, well, I think you know the moment is coming. We want Zulus to be at the council. Okay, fine. We still can't be friends? No. He says, no, okay, fuck you forever. <laughs> Go for our Becky. He texts me, goes, when you're done with the fascism thing, we can be friends again. <laughs> okay, fuck you forever. We used to send each other pictures of barbecues because, you know, no one knows how to barbecue. <laughs> and so he said, I want to send you this picture of this barbecue, but I think that time has come. What time? What time are we talking about? You know, Govan Becky is a big ANC guy. Big League Communist Party ANC. We're in fucking Robin Island together. Okay, what time? Well, I think you know because of what you said about people from Mozambique having AIDS. <laughs> okay, fuck you forever. Goodbye. <laughs> That's how you do it as a real man. <laughs> and, but I just ask that, why can't you talk to Winnie? <laughs> She still thinks we should let people from Zimbabwe run across the border and give us all diseases like lepers and dogs. Yeah. And by the way, I'm not a racist. <laughs> it's 
totally unfair. Well, you're, Soros is instigating. You, you, uh, <laughs> it's the free speech. I just and want to have an open exchange of ideas, but many do not want to have this as well. So if you're a cis man, you're, okay. Uh, Ahmed yep. Kathrada, fuck you forever. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, let's go to the IMs. Right. Like, for instance, I don't think, for instance, people are saying, hey, White people don't get sickle cell anemia in the way that black people do. We've got to work on that. Think about it. <laughs> and therefore, racism must not be real. Could you imagine if white people had fucking sickle cell? It wouldn't even fucking exist anymore. That's how bad racism is. Actually, that's not necessarily incorrect. <laughs> New human. I meant it in the opposite way. Don't put words in my mouth, you fucking lesbian. <laughs> 